Uh, good afternoon again. Uh, I'm not Dr. Lucas. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. Lucas is unable to do the legislative update companion video um, because she uh, has no power at her house. And so um, I am doing that in her place. And I would encourage you all to get with either Dr. Lucas or myself via email if you have questions about any of the legislation um, that I'm going to share with you. Uh, please know that what I'm sharing with you is not a comprehensive list, um, but it is a list of some um, legislation that you are likely to be asked about when you meet with your legislators on Monday. I also encourage you to review the PowerPoint um, that Dr. Lucas and I presented at convocation um, last week uh, for a more comprehensive listing of bills. And remember that you can track those bills at WestVirginiaLegislature.gov should you want to go on and look at the actual content of the bill as well as the sponsors. Um, for example, if you're going to meet with a legislator, I think it's particularly important for you to know whether or not they're a sponsor on that bill. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is Senate Bill 6, House Bill 2006, the Medical Professional Liability Act. Again, as I mentioned in the first video, this is totally separate from provider status in the way it's being addressed on Capitol Hill in Washington. Um, this bill specifically deals with medical professional liability and names pharmacists as health care providers and pharmacies as health care facilities. Um, it also adds others, including nursing home facilities and physician's assistants, and it is um, my understanding that is the adding of the nursing home facilities that has become very contentious in the discussions over at the Capitol. Um, so there's a lot of passion about this bill, particularly around nursing homes being added. Um, there are some main talking points in the attached document that will be helpful to you. Um, in terms of explaining why pharmacists are health care providers and why this is important for us. And again, this bill in no way relates to billing or expanding the pharmacy scope of practice. Um, we actually have a fairly robust scope of practice already through um, the Practice Act um, a couple of years ago. So um, it has passed the Senate, it has passed the House, but the versions are different now, so it's headed to a conference committee, so this bill is not a done deal. I also mentioned in the previous video that either Dr. Lucas or myself, uh, one of us will be reaching out to the teams um, that are approaching a legislator in which this, um, they who voted against this uh, bill, so that you're aware of that and we can provide you some additional instruction on how you might want to deal with that. Uh, the next is Senate Bill 203, House Bill uh, 2350. And that is uh, related to immunizations administered by pharmacists. Um, this bill should be of a particular interest to you because it would allow pharmacy interns within the state of West Virginia to administer immunizations under supervision of a pharmacist. Um, it also adds menjacocal to the list of, our, um, uh, of vaccination, excuse me, that pharmacists can administrator, administer. Um, and right now this is going to the House and Senate Ju Judiciary Committee. Um, Senate Bill 9 and 335, as well as House Bill 2009 and 2044, uh, allow law enforcement and emergency personnel to process um, naloxone. I'm probably saying that incorrectly. I'm trying to play Dr. Lucas on TV right now, um, but I know all of you are very familiar um, with that particular uh, drug. And so I want you to pay careful attention to the bullet points that have been um, provided. Uh, Senate Bill 335 is completed legislation. It is actually waiting the governor's signature. So um, that could be a positive thing. Um, Senate Bill 205 and House Bill 2351 are rules relating to pharmacy technicians. Um, so you'll want to pay careful attention to the handout in regard to some talking points for that bill. And then um, Senate Bill 205, House Bill 2352, um, those relate to co um, excuse me, those relate to Controlled Substance Monitoring Board. So um, it's important for you to look at that and be familiar with that bill because you may get asked questions about that one. And then Senate Bill 286 to 556 relates to compulsory immunizations of students. Many of us have been talking about this because it allows for some um, exemptions from immunizations the way in which it is um, currently um, 
currently we do not allow for those things in, in statute. So, um, in fact, right now only West Virginia uh, and one other state um, do not allow non-medical exemptions for immunizations, and this bill would change that. Uh, in addition, it clarifies the process for medical exemption for a vaccine. Um, it has passed the Senate, so this bill does have some traction, and so you'll want to pay careful attention to that bill. House Bill 2103 permits uh, and requires background checks for initial licenses in health professions, including pharmacy. Um, there is a House Bill 2239 creating a Board of Health Professions. This is the umbrella bill we discussed at convocation. Um, that bill seems to have stalled and lost some traction, um, so it looks like there will need some further study. Um, don't anticipate this being a, a too hot of a button at this moment. And then finally, um, House Bill 2259 requires expedient appointment of uh, individuals for Board of Pharmacy vacancies within 60 days. So that's a pretty straightforward bill. Um, so the biggest one, um, obviously, it, it is uh, Senate Bill 6. Uh, look for some additional communication uh, regarding that bill from either Dr. Lucas or myself, particularly for those legislative teams who are approaching a legislator who may have voted no on that particular piece of legislation. So that is a very, very quick snapshot. Um, if you have questions, I encourage you to um, reach out to Dr. Lucas or myself uh, and we can uh, steer you in the right direction. So. Um, I really appreciate your time and attention um, to the alternate delivery of uh, this afternoon's um, previously scheduled WebEx, which has become kind of an email video conversation. So I'll be checking email over the weekend should you have any questions. Um, uh, thanks and have a great day.